you, right? You being so private and you mm-hmm. being this person that's like, bro, I clearly don't want my love life out there, right? right. And then, if I put it out there, it's going to be on my terms when I feel like Exactly. It. But you being that way, right? You uh-huh. being so reserved in who you love and what you do in your love life respectfully. Mm-hmm. But then, boom, said song drop with said song with said name in it. It's like, boom, my spot blowing up. Like, I don't want this to be out there. Yeah. Like, is, is that yeah. like, is that frustrating? It's like, yo, bro, I'm doing everything to keep this away. And then this happened. But, you know, I look at it like artists making music. That's just how they make music, so. Mm, but that doesn't like fru- it doesn't make it harder. It though. don't really frustrate me though, no, because I'm an artist, and if I wanted to do the same thing, then that's what I'm gonna do. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Until my birthday, I'm on a cleanse. November what? Second. Second. Oh my gosh. Not too long. <clears throat> Just not today, though. <laughs> These goddamn Scorpios, man. The best. Are you guys the best or? We really are the best. I mean, we the people's <sighs> choice. So. For real? I think I would like to say, I wouldn't say the people's choice. Yeah, we definitely the people's choice. Everybody say we loyal. Sneaky, really, you got a Scorpio in your life, though. Of course, no. I do. Exactly. My so. girl was a Scorpio. Exactly. We're the people's choice. Like it'd be the closest ones to you that be a Scorpio. So that just says enough. We not liars. Are crazy. Yeah, we are crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a Gemini, so like y'all are loony. That's okay. Yeah, but loony. I mean, who are you today? <laughs> What's popping, everybody? Okay. Mr. J Hill is in the building. That's clearly who I am. J Hill Podcast. Uh. Episode shit, man. We, man, we had a lot. Uh, special guests in the building. Mm, mm, mm. Des Dior. I wanted to ask you this. Mm-hmm. Why I introduce you? Is it is it Des or Des? Or is it the same thing? It's the same thing for real. Whatever roll off your tongue. Sometimes I say Des Dior. Sometimes I say Des Dior. It's just you know. Okay. I was wondering if that if, if that was any type of pet peeve of yours. Mm-hmm. Somebody. Some said. people like my family call me Des, and then like. People close to me call me dead, so it's just, it's just, you know. Okay, how are you? Like, like you got a lot of things going on. I'm blessed, you know. I'm thankful. Like, I'm glad to have all these opportunities, all this stuff in motion. Like, being busy is always good. So, mm. is it? I'm or, happy because sometimes it can be a coping mechanism. I like being busy. Maybe it is a coping mechanism, but it just keeps my mind off a lot of things. Me being busy and I'm being productive, so. Whether it is a couple of I actually before good. you got in here, right? I was like, You ready? You sure? You like, should I be worried? I don't yeah. I don't know if you ever watched any of my interviews, but it can get like sometimes it get emotional. I seen a couple. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I seen like a good range. Some one of them was emotional. Sometimes it can get emotional. That's what yeah. I was asking. Like, are you in that space? What type of space are you in today? I'm in a level headed space. I'm like pretty balanced right now. Um, I don't think I'm an emotional person. <laughs> a Scorpio. You know? Isn't we can be, but we not like come on, just openly emotional. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah. So you think you're just like that's is that the purpose of the cleanse? No, the purpose of the cleanse is because I've been getting fucking lit. I've been getting lit like this past month. It was my friend's birthday. I had my release party. Mm-hmm. We was just doing a lot of celebrating. So I just been. What was the project? Um, bro. When? when it, it released drop? on the twenty third. Was so the twenty third? I had my party on the twenty second. Yeah. That's re- that's relatively new. Celebrating yeah, a project. Celebrating dropping. a project. The, a project on BT the, the show. The impact. The yeah. Impact at ATO. Yeah, it's a lot to celebrate. <sighs> had a premiere party right after my friend birthday. Like we just was doing a lot of turning up. So I needed a break. Yeah. Do you um, do you feel like sometimes you over you working yourself to like? Read all the noise and things like that that's going on in your life because you got a lot of things that's going on. Yeah, I definitely could say I do that a lot. You know, I stay busy so I don't really catch, get caught up in like just thinking mm. about stuff I really don't want to think about. So when do you? But ever... I still be having time at home sometimes. But it's like as soon as I get up, I'm back to work. So when so. do you have like you have time at home? 
Are you talking to anybody about what's going on? Or is it just like I be, I talk my friends. Anybody around me, I talk their head it. off. Like people close to me, I'll just talk their head off. But sometimes stuff be better left unsaid, so I don't even really be talking about it. Mm. After I didn't talk about it so much. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yo, <clears> it's, <throat> it's it's crazy because like you're so young and you got so much good things going on for you, right? And I was just as I was I'm doing my research, it's like every interview. No, let me scratch that. What I will say is I love when you talking to the girls, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, it's different for me, yeah. right? Like, I, like that's not like my vibe. I probably wouldn't watch it, mm -hmm. but I know that like it, you, it's, it's an energy that come with you when you talking to girls mm -hmm. that like I know other girls appreciate. If that makes sense. Yeah. And I, as I was looking, I'm like, man, when did she ever like, like give me a serious moment? Like give me some vulnerability? Like give me like, and that's that's as I'm watching, I'm like, I wanted I wanted to come in here intentionally with that on my mind because like every time I watch you, it's like you're so fun. And it's a great thing. Yeah. But I'm like, man, I know it's something behind. It's, a, it's, it's something under these these layers, this onion. And I wanted to pull it back. Vulnerability scares me. Mm. Why so? Why so? I don't know. It's just like, I think being vulnerable is just a sign of being like weak. I don't like, for, I don't like to just show everything on my sleeves. I feel like, I feel like people take advantage of vulnerability. So it just, you know, it didn't scar me. Mm. Being vulnerable didn't scar me. That's such a fact. I think, um... I think it's kind of the opposite. I think vulnerability is is a sign of being strong, right? Yeah, I think about it like that sometimes too. But but it's scary. People take it take it as a weakness. I, so, I can see that, which makes it scary, you know, because it's like you don't even appreciate me being vulnerable. Like people take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. They use it for their own personal gain. Yeah, I think I was talking to your sister, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh man, I just talk." I'm not going to reveal the conversation, but it was like I can see the pain. I guess you see how people can manipulate situations. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, man, only if you knew. I mean, yeah. like the opposite, right? And um, I say that to say, like, you've mentioned so many times how, like, you're so private, mm -hmm. right? But, like, you're so popular. Right. How, so how does that go? How does that even tie in? It's hard because being popular, people want to know a lot about you. And, like, you know, being popular, you got to be, like, relatable. So in order to be relatable, you got to share. Mm. And it's just complicated for me. I feel like that's the most complicated part about being popular for me because I feel like my privacy is my peace. But I also want to get to know my fans. I want to get to know people, but it's just like a fucking, it's a wall. Mm. Can I curse? Yeah, you good. It's a wall and it's like just slowly breaking it down, but I always get knocked back to step one. How is dealing with that on a day to day? Because it's not like you, it's not like you can chill right like you outside like you working right. like you're doing vlog and you you got the show on BET. that's the way i let people get to know me it's on like my terms i'm just on there just being myself mm. and somebody following me with a camera okay so how do you get the people because like we can't ignore because you're doing so much you got different type of fans mm -hmm. right you got fans for the vlog so right. you got fans because you're best friends with Jay. like you got fans for all types of ways of your life right, right. and t do you ever feel like man i just want y'all to to understand, like, this is who I am. That's not me, but this is who I am. Do you ever feel like you're caught in that trap with that maze? Like, Des Dior and Destiny? Yeah, that's a great, yeah, I like that. Um, Yeah, I feel like to the world I'm Des Dior, but people really, people know Destiny because Destiny is, like, the privacy of me, mm. you know? Like, if it was up to Destiny, I probably wouldn't even be on social media. Mm. But the Des Dior in me is just, you know, I be on there, just popping my shit, just being me, being fun. What was the question? Is You said, is it? Do you ever? Is it hard? Is it hard trying to get people to know the real you, like the destiny? Or do you even care? Do you even want people to know? I mean, I feel like some people know. The people that I care about knowing know. Mm. Like, I don't feel the need to get on there and, like, to the internet prove who I am. That's you know, good. In that gap. But I feel like people know people know me enough. And then the people that know me, like the people close to me in my corner, they know me, know me. But like the people on the outside, they know me enough. They know me enough to, you know, to where I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And what do you think that is that they know? I feel like they really just know like the glitz and the glams of everything. They don't know what I really like be going through. They don't know like you know, the hardships. They look at everything like it's just perfect, you know? And, and shit don't be perfect. Is that, but it's right. Yeah. But is that okay with you, though? Like, that's all they no, know? No, that's that? not okay. But then in order for them to know everything else, I got to be vulnerable. And that's where, that's the hard part for me. Mm. 
It's so tricky. Like that's I was, it's tricky. Like it's, it's hard. It is. It's, it's, it's just crazy because like I look through. Like I try to look through like everything, right? So mm-hmm. even on your social media, your social <clears> media <throat> is fucking lit. That's what everybody talk about, right? right. Like everybody talk about how you be dripped up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you really put that shit on because mm-hmm. you really do. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. But I just like man, it's something else. Yeah, and that's what I wanted. I was like, what, something else. What are you? Do looking you think? For? Do you think? Do you think? The drip is to keep people out of your business? Do you think you wear it to be like, oh, that's just who you are? Like, is it like, man? Nah, I wear it because that's just who I am. I love mm. clothes. I love fashion. Like, even when I'm not on the internet, like, just walking around the house, I might just put on, like, cute lounge clothes, you know? Oh, you really got that shit. Yeah, like, it just <laughs> really just, it it go based off how I feel. When I be putting on nice clothes, like, taking care of myself, it make me feel good. Mm. So, I take pride in, like, what So, I you never on. wanted to, like, just chill, even if you... If you go somewhere, like, let's say you go to the corner store. I don't know if y'all got that. I, here, right? Like, I just throw on some. I'm not saying I just look top tier every day. Like, I be going out looking a mess sometimes. A hot ass mess. When? I don't believe it. At the it. nail shop, at the hair salon. I don't believe it. Believe it. You probably get them people to come to you like, nah, fuck that. No, I literally, when I go to the nail salon, I might just throw on some hair, be looking a mess. Like, just, you know, that's because I. That's how I felt, like, walking out the house. I think that's a relatable moment. I feel yeah. like to the to the outside, a lot of people probably wouldn't know that. Yeah, because I ain't just on the internet, like, oversharing, just taking a picture, like, oh, yeah, this how I look today. My hair mess, but I ain't got no lashes on. Would like, you do that? Yeah, I have. Like, you see me on YouTube looking crazy all the time. Like, I, don't think I, I be on the internet. Crazy. I be on my stories just posting me in my natural state. Like, I ain't scared of it, you know. But I'm not somebody, too, that even when I do look good, sometimes I might not even post that day. Mm. Like, I'm just not super open for real like my life is not on the internet right you know i get it you um <clears throat> you said if you if you wasn't even in islam like you wouldn't you probably wouldn't even have social media exactly right do you feel like it's a pressure that comes with that being in his lifestyle like what what are some of the pressures that come with it outside of social media outside of that it's a lot of pressures that come with it you know like especially being a female in this mm. industry because you judge like harshly Every your day, body, yeah. like you for just being like you. They want you to be like this person, and and it's like even in a female with the female industry, with the females in the industry, they want to compare a lot. So they don't really do that to guys, but they do it to women. Like from our body to our hair, they just criticize us with everything. Our mm-hmm. music, my music, like somebody uh fashion music fashion anything any field like they criticize women just harshly that's mm. what makes it super hard you know and they make women feel like you can't be yourself or you got to change who you are to just fit in or just satisfy other people that's mm. what's like hard can we put our mic down a little bit just so it won't be in our face i'm sorry damn that's it's it's crazy but do you think it's more of the outside that was a great catch do you think it's more of the outside who was doing that or um other other females in the game or other women in the game that's doing a compare? Honestly, I feel like everybody play a part. Mm. Like, everybody really play a part, for real. Is that frustrating for you as an artist, though? I mean, but not even just being an artist, being so young, because I can imagine, I can assume that you probably came up, not looking up, but, like, admiring some of these women that's in the industry, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get in the industry, and it's, it's kind of like what Drake said, um, idols turn into rivals. Right. And it's like, you're forced into that, like, bro, I didn't want to be for nobody. <laughs> like, what the right. fuck? Does that have a play a part in it? I mean, yeah, it is people that you probably grew up looking up to, and now that you, like, in the same field as them, you looking at it like, damn, like, how did I look up to you for all these years? But, mm. you know, shit, beefing? That's what you're saying, beefing? I mean, shit, even... Not even just beefing, but like just people comparing. Or just looking like at putting, it different. Yeah, yeah, putting you in that yeah. box of like this person versus like this versus, versus this person. This person is like, bro, this I never. This person ain't good as this person, yeah. or they should have had this person. Like, bro, I never asked for that. Yeah. Like, and then what happened is that person probably respond, and it's like, yo, what the fuck? It's weird. The people play. The people play a huge part. But like, I feel like when yo was popping. This episode is sponsored by BK Juices. Look, man, if you're looking for some drinks that's refreshing and that's also healthy, make sure you check out BK Juices. You can find them online at bkjuices.com. A social media, Instagram is the real BK Juices, and Facebook is BK Juices. If you want 10% off, all you got to do is go online at bkjuices.com, enter the promo code JHill10, you get 10% off. Like I said, if you're looking for something that tastes good, that's refreshing, and that's also healthy for you, check out my people at bkjuices.com. That's BK Juices.
artists and people like feed into it, it's like, damn, now you just stupid to their level. Mm. But, what was the the weirdest situation you probably have seen this far? Um, and you don't have to say no names or nothing like that, but just like a situation that caught you off by surprise, like what the fuck? I see shit every day. If I speak on anything or even like a little bit of detail, you gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. I probably wouldn't, honestly. Just... No, they gonna know. <laughs> they gonna know. But it's a lot of weird shit that be going on that I'm just glad I'm not a part of. Damn, man. Let's get to the music, man. Yeah. You've been doing the music for some years now. Since you was like what, twelve? I think. Yeah, I, I had a rap group when I was twelve. But talk to me about the music, man. Cause it's like, what did you take a break? You're like, man, look, I'm doing, I'm doing <laughs> something else. So when I was young, I um I just could do I could always do it like it was always one of my talents. So me and my friends was in middle school, like we was always into doing like spontaneous things, always hustling. So we started a rap group, we was mm-hmm. perform and do stuff like that. Like we always been them girls. But once we stopped, like I never seen myself honestly like pursuing it. I just knew I, I love music. Like music is my passion. I listen to music. Like it's like it get me through everything. But like I said, I never seen myself like going back into pursuing it. Like, I tried a whole bunch of different business ventures. So lip gloss. I sold clothes. Like, I was just hustling. I worked at CVS. I did a lot of different things. But when I was in high school, I started, like, making little rap videos in the car. Mm-hmm. And once my dad seen it, he was like, um... Yeah, that's it. Like, I remember you saying it. Yeah, like, once he seen it, he was like, you need to take this serious. And I'm like, nah. You know, like, nah. Because I really didn't, like... I was scared, mm-hmm. you know, like I was scared, but like he was so evident about it. He was like, I'm getting you in the studio. You're going to get in the studio. So once I got in the studio, it was around like my senior year when I graduated, like towards the end of 2017. And I started like practicing and staying in the studio. And then I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with making music. And once I moved to Atlanta, I just started like really doing it on my own. Like just moving around the city, networking, going to the studio, meeting different people. I probably be in the studio with one of my friends, and they recording, and then I'm just in the building, and then I meet somebody, somebody who engineer, and now I'm doing sessions by myself. Like I just really used to be networking, and I feel like God really placed me in different places because this is what I'm like meant to be doing. I'm so glad you said that, right? The God piece, because we can't like forget about we can, him. We can, we can, we can tread lightly as possible. We can't, we can't really like. Ignore that, like that. A big part of your career is, is, is God, mm-hmm. right? You've been around so many like high profile people. Could you ever even imagine, like, damn, like this is where I'm at? Like you said, I'm in a studio. I might see this person, even shit. I mean, let's be real. Like even dating, like it's just like you're around so many high profile people, and it's like, yo, this is it's a blessing though. We can't. Yeah, it's we, a blessing for sure. My whole life is a blessing. Damn, but like, do you do you ever sit at home like, man, this is crazy? Like, this is how my life laid out. Yeah, yes, like, look, like, and I'm only 23. Yes, crazy. and I'm only 23. Yes, I, and I feel like my family remind me every day because they just be like, wow, like, oh, my God. So it make me sit back and be like, damn, like, this shit really is lit. Like, this ain't really, this ain't, this ain't an average lifestyle, mm. you know? So I do sit back sometimes and be like, damn, this is my life. Bro, it's crazy because I can only imagine, right? Like, um. Just a little bit about myself. I'm with Atlanta to do these interviews and like shit just start going crazy. You right? From Even Baltimore? From, yeah, from Baltimore. I can tell. You partying in Baltimore before? Uh I had got booked out there one time. It was lit. I feel like yeah, you Yeah, lit. it was lit. But I've been there a couple times. It was an outdoor like venue? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I probably was hosting. Honestly. Yeah, it was lit. You probably was. Yeah. Shock Lizzie. It was me and Shock Lizzie. I think I might have been hosting. Yeah. Like yeah. it was lit. Yeah, shout out to my guy Mo Stacks. Uh, probably was on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, that's a yeah. movie. Come on, man. World. <laughs> shout, yeah, out to the, shout out to the hotel. Yeah. But nah, um, I moved out here and shit just took off, right? Mm-hmm. And if I can sit back and be like, damn, look at me, I can only imagine. Right. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, when I look back on my life, I just really be like, damn, because when I first moved to Atlanta, I was living with my, one of my friends uh, and. I hadn't even had my own place before. And I moved here, like, with no idea what I was going to do. I just was hustling. And I knew, I told my mama, like, God ain't going to put me in no situation that I can't handle. Mm. So, like, a year later after that, I got my own place, my first apartment. And that's when I really started, like, maneuvering around. Even when I was with my friend, I used to be in the studio a little bit. But it wasn't, I wasn't really, like, it wasn't, like, on the front of my mind. Like, I wasn't really taking it super, super serious. But once I moved into my own place, I'm like, I got to figure this shit out. And that's when I started, like, networking, going to the studios. And then COVID came, and I really locked in, like, really was hustling. And I had a lot of time to just sit and think and, like, 
strategically plan out what I wanted to do. And that's when I got in the studio and I dropped my EP and came up with visuals and just did a whole bunch of stuff. And I just been flourishing. So just curious, right? Because Jada is your best friend. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been since high school. We've been best friends since middle school. Since middle school. Mm -hmm. So I'm treading lightly because I don't know too much, mm -hmm. right? But I think I know a little something, but you can correct me at any time. Right? Okay. This is an open space. So if I even say anything, just, you know what I'm saying? Okay. You're good. You're good. Okay, we good. good. It's a safe space here. Mm -hmm. That's your best friend in, since middle school, right? From mm -hmm. the little bit that I do know, she's been like going crazy since like high school. Mm -hmm. You said you moved down here. Um, who, who moved down here first, you or her? She moved out here first because, oops. She is my mic close enough? Is it? Yeah, you okay. Good, yeah. She moved out here first because she graduated before me, and I moved to St. Louis my senior year because I was living with my dad throughout like my whole middle school and high school, and then I moved with my mom in St. Louis my senior year. So me and her wasn't really like with each other. I want to say her eleventh grade. She graduated in eleventh grade, so her eleventh grade year, two years. Okay, so you get down here. And the picture I'm trying to paint She was is, already here. Right. She's already here. Yeah. She already got it figured out. It seemed like she was mm -hmm. lit since high school, right? Mm -hmm. You trying to figure it out. But that being your yeah. best friend, was it ever a moment like where you feel, felt the pressure that like, I got to turn it on because that's my best friend. I got to turn up. Did you ever nah, feel like that? No, I really never felt no pressure because like what's meant for me is for me. Like even if I was working a nine to five and my best friend was lit, that's just the situation. Like, mm. you know, that's just what it is. But being that I had so many high goals for myself and I knew what I wanted for myself, that's what pressured me into saying, like, all right, I got to get this done. This is what I got to do. Damn. Versus, that's, like, just because somebody else lit. That's super dope because, like, you would think, just you would assume, like, I think it's a, a human trait that, like, mm -hmm. just feel like. Now, man. she definitely inspired me and mm -hmm. showed me, like, okay, this shit is possible. But I didn't feel the pressure to be, like, all on the internet and all that just because my friend was. Mm -hmm. So when did at, at what point then it did it turn on to you, right? Like at what point would did it? Like it come I said, I was just your? just on the internet. I was the rap videos and stuff like that. Like that's kind of what made me tap into the music. If I wasn't doing music, I probably would be selling clothes or something. But I quit my job, and that's when I knew, like, all right, this shit ain't for me. At what point you was like, I'm okay to quit my job? I quit my job when I was in 12th grade. But not even like what grade you were or yet or how old you were. When you like, said like, okay. At what, at what point like, did I have money saved up? Or money or anything. How you feeling? Like what, at what point of your life was I just I just was like, I, I don't do well with rules and like being told what to do. And I quit my job. I quit my job. I remember because the, they was like, I can't call off. Was that CBS? I couldn't call off. Yeah. <sighs> And I'm like, what? Like, somebody telling me that I can't call off because I don't feel good. Like, this ain't the life for me. You know, it's crazy because, like, you always, like, they always judge Geminis. But, like, mm -hmm. I feel like Scorpio and Geminis are similar. We're, We're not similar. similar. We are, first of all, very stubborn. We are stubborn. Uh, Moody as hell. You're definitely moody. Y'all are way more moody. But we are moody. Okay, we're moody every uh, um, it's a, It's a lot more. Yeah. It's a lot more. Like, but I we was got a lot of my best friend. One of my best friends is Gemini, so and you got a nerve. Yeah, to, but she crazy. But you probably love her crazy. Yeah, head. I love her. Right. I love her though. <laughs> like, like the fuck, don't try to. She got a special place in my heart for sure. But, uh, it's crazy because I was working for Rite Aid, uh -huh. right? And I was in college and um, mm -hmm. Rite Aid and CVS like the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why I was right. Okay. Yeah. See, I can relate to you mm -hmm. a little bit. You right. feel me? Um, you way more drippier than me, but I can relate <laughs> a little bit. But like, yeah. So I was working for Rite Aid and um. I had a, like a tryout for football for football practice or some shit like that mm -hmm. at college at Morgan, and they was like, "I'm like, bro, like I gotta leave. Can you right. to cover my shift?" They like, "Nah." I'm like, "All right, bet. Well, I quit." Literally, exactly. Like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, how are you gonna tell me no? Like, I quit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I quit. Damn. So, um, we still on a project raw, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, you got you dropped this 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 video. Na now, now, nigga, right? Na now, now. How do I say? It? Help now. me out. <laughs> Is now or Nanho? Nan Nanho. Yeah. All right, because like, it was like, I'm a little old, so like, <laughs> oh, I need help. Nanho, N A N A. Yeah. So you got Nanho, right? Mm hmm. Sample. Shh. With, uh, she's fine. She could, oh. she could get down if she want. Well, unless she'll go to the bathroom, I don't know. Hope she don't. Don't let her get down. Okay, so the sample, that's a trainer sample, right? Uh huh. And she's in the video. Come on, talk to me. Stop playing. 
Love her for that. Come on, love stop. Her. Love Trina. Trina is like a real ass female. Like she's a real ass individual. Was that hard to get? No, honestly. Trina is Trina like, shows so much love. Like she really real. I fuck with her. I feel like if anybody could get all the like females rappers together that's having a dispute or whatever, it mm -hmm. could be Trina. I feel like Trina needs to just step up and be like, look, all you little motherfuckers need to come here and have one meeting. Yeah. It wouldn't happen. That shit is a fucking mess. Well, like, what's, what's, what's messy about it? I, you, I'm When I'm asking, I'm really asking because I don't what's know. What's messy about, like, the female rap beef? Yeah. I feel like it's just all unnecessary, you know? But that's just me, you know? I don't feel no need to beef with nobody because I am who I am. That's a fact. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Like, I ain't looking at nobody else. I ain't in nobody else lane. I ain't know nobody else wave. And I just don't really be. I was just telling my friend this the other day, like, I really don't be feeling the need. Like, I strongly don't be feeling the need, feeling the need to, like, argue with nobody. What do you think it come from? Just curious. You ain't talking about nobody in particular, but just curious. I don't be caring. Like, I did all that in high school. And growing up, I just knew it got me nowhere. Mm -hmm. Like, Arguing, fighting, beefing, that shit don't get you nowhere. What do you, you know think what I'm the, the beef come between girls? Like, what do you think that I feel like on? girls are just real catty, you know, and That's competitive true. and just, I don't know. That's true. And it's, it's, what what about the, the fact of, like, do you think you have a lot of male fans when it comes to music? Probably not. Because it's like, like you wouldn't be mad. Would you be mad at me if I'm like, nah, I'm not bumping that no, I would not car. be mad because that's just your personal preference, but... Or the average guy. An average guy, yeah, no, because I don't really make music for guys. Right. I feel like that's been a discussion. But my shit hard, though. I ain't going to nah, lie. You listen hard. to my shit, you going to nod your head for nah, sure. No, your shit hard. Your shit hard. I kind of want to, like, give you a like a comparison, but, like, I'm scared because I don't know don't there's no Don't compare me to nobody. Right, okay. That was bad. But yeah. I just feel like you rap, like, one of the illest... MCs out right now too. Really? That's a That's just in my Thank you. In I'll my take opinion. that comparison. I feel like when I hear you, I'm like, damn, shit, y'all. Yeah. And it, it shocked me though, because I'm thinking like usually, oh, I'm trying to trade. I'm being trying to be careful. Usually you trade like you. I'm trying to because I know you got that that stinger. I don't want to get stung. But like usually you see a girl that's like lit on Instagram, like mm -hmm. some might deem as like IG models or whatever like yeah. that, right? And they they go to make music. It's like oh, here go another one. See, I've been doing this shit way before I was really like. Who I am on but Instagram. you can tell. Can but, you though? Because some people try to really put me in that category. But that's, see, I'm, that's why, it's, it's, ignorance is bliss for a reason. I'm yeah. glad I could have this conversation right. ignorantly because uh, you could tie it on me, no harm by it. But at the mm -hmm. same time. People really. Exactly. Yeah. So me not knowing any better, right? Mm -hmm. Just being real. I'm being vulnerable. They're going to kill me. Your fans going to kill me. But I'm being vulnerable, right? And I'm like, I automatically put you in that, in that, in that category by mistake, yeah, right? But honest. I listen to your music and I'm like. Oh. Wait a minute. Yeah, like, Hold she don't on. belong here. Yeah. That's no, crazy. I've been doing this shit. Like, I didn't just start doing music because of the wave of doing music. Mm. Like, I've really been doing this shit. From my raps in the car to me just being in a studio in high school. Like, i just been doing this. But you could tell. Yeah. Do you, do, you, do you ever feel like, man, these hoes need to give you my respect? Do you have that chip on your shoulder when you go in the studio at all? Um, I would. I would. But I'm gonna Give me my respect. <laughs> yeah, like like you said, or not even just hoes, like just people in general, like you said, they try to put you yeah, in that category. Yeah, for sure. It's like, nah, nigga, yeah. I'll do this. Yes, definitely. 100%. Mm, that's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. 100%. But you that's wouldn't right. just, you wouldn't just, uh, like. I'm not going to get on the internet, like, trying to, like, beg for my respect. Like, no, like, y'all just, you know. I mean, sometimes it works. I mean, shit, not even beg for your respect. We see 50 Cent career, he came up just dissing everybody, like, fuck y'all niggas. Yeah, I talk shit in my music for sure. Like, I talk shit. Like, yeah, but I'm talking about, like, getting on the internet, getting on live and just no, telling people, oh, y'all need to respect me because, oh, this is that. <laughs> no, but, like, definitely go listen to my music and y'all going to feel me. Yo, you lit, bro. I feel like um, I would be doing myself and my, and my platform this service mm -hmm. if I ain't talk about this, right? Congratulations but I just wanna... on your platform, too. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate lit. that. How annoying. Right, I just, we want to talk about it on the other side. Okay, how annoying is it to when you? I'm assuming mm -hmm. and you can correct me anytime. I promise, I won't feel no way. When you go on these platforms and all, all people want to talk about is uh, somebody you might be associated with. How annoying is that? I can only imagine. Super, because there's so much more to talk about. Mm. But do you understand how that could be? A priority, I guess. 
priority? No. For people to want to know. That's curious. Curiosity. I mean, no, it's not a priority. They just nosy mm. because nothing is hidden. Nothing is a secret. Everything on my Instagram, everything on my page, like, y'all gonna know. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like it's just them being nosy. Like, mm. they just curious, which I understand, but it's like, it's definitely not a priority. Not for you. Not for, no, it shouldn't be a priority for nobody. It shouldn't be, but we live in an age it ain't of your business. It ain't your business. We live in an age of Instagram. We do, but still, that's it's boundaries. Like, everything ain't for everybody to know. Like, it's boundaries with everybody. Mm. And it's boundaries with my personal life, so. And that's that brings me to the question I was I was urging you to ask you, right? You being so private and you mm -hmm. being this person that's like, bro, I clearly don't want my love life out there, right? right. And then, if I put it out there, it's going to be on my terms when I feel like exactly. it. Exactly. But you being that way, right? You uh -huh. being so reserved in who you love and what you do in your love life respectfully. Mm -hmm. But then, boom, said song drop with said song with said name in it. It's like boom, my spot blowing up. Like I don't want this to be out there. Yeah. Like is, is that like yeah. is that frustrating? It's like yo, bro, I'm doing everything to keep this away, and then this happen. But you know, I look at it like artists making music. That's just how they make music. So, mm, but that doesn't like it doesn't make it harder. It though. don't really frustrate me though. No, because I'm an artist, and if I wanted to do the same thing, then that's what I'm gonna do. Mm. And I'm gonna look at you like you just gotta understand, because you know I'm just expressing myself. <laughs> He's I'm talking about my life. I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at. It. I'm just you curious, know? like, does that make it harder to have the have conversations now? Because like now, I was like, all right, but I don't want to talk about this. Boom, song drop, make people want to talk about it even more. Like people are asking you questions, like, do you know how to make ramen? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, let's be real. Like, come on. I knew it. Literally, I was just waiting <laughs> on you to say that. Like, like, it's, like, it's, come on. Like, yeah, but no, like, artists just express themselves through their music. You know, that's mm. just they create a space. Whether they just. Saying shit to have fun or just being realistic. So you would never like even moving forward, right? So whatever situation or was or is, would you ever have a, a a set boundary that this can't happen if I'm with somebody? What you mean? Give me an example. Like, um, for example, like yo, if we're gonna do something, right? Mm -hmm. Just don't put my name in on music. Would that be a boundary for you? No, you can't really tell an artist how to be an artist. You just gotta let them be them you know because mm -hmm. whatever they feel like when they go in the studio that day that might be like they hit fucking song or you know that might go up so i ain't gonna put no limits to that so you want if they feel the need to go talk about me in a song or if i feel the need to go talk about somebody in a song or go say something then that's just what i'm gonna do you know mm -hmm. i'm not gonna ask for no approval on how i'm gonna be creative so there's no limit no limitations on anybody that don't nah, it's a respect now if somebody dragging you in a song then that's just like okay cool like all right now but other than that, no, have fun, do you? It's just boundaries and respect. Yeah. I had a question about um one of your songs, right? Mm hmm It said, it's, it's the song, I Can't Blame You, mm -hmm. right? It said, um I think it was like track three, I think, maybe. Track three, yeah, it's three. Come on. Right after yeah. the now. All right, well, babe, you, you did your research, I guess. All, all right. right. It said, uh, I need more than all this money. I need, I need more than healing, more I than need, diamonds. I, I mean, I need more than uh, healing. I need more than all this money. I need healing. Oh, yeah, I need healing. I need more than diamonds, more than sex, more than love, more than feelings. I've been, I've hurt, been hurt so many times. I need a real one. <laughs> that was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. Yeah. What, 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 talk about the hurt. Talk about the hurt. Talk about the hurt, man. The hurt didn't got me where I am today. You know, like. The hurt make me go harder. Mm. So I'm thankful for the hurt. Mm. You know? And you when needed I needed that almost, right? I needed that. Yeah. You need that. That's how you learn. You how know? does that how does that change things moving forward? Of how you dealing with work, dealing with friendships, dealing with relationships, whatever. Like, how does that hurt? Honestly, hurt make me go harder, but sometimes it takes some time to learn. Mm. You know, because you might find yourself in the same situation and then boom, it's like now you hurt again, so the hurt made me just chill, smarter. sit back, and just, it made me smarter. It made me just focus on myself, mm. you know? What are some things that you are able to see clearly now, I guess, now that this storm is gone? That, isn't that like an old school song, now that the rain is gone? <laughs> you wouldn't know nothing about that. Nothing. <laughs> and my life ain't, I ain't fun to just sit here and cap like my life just all bad and I'm just all butt hurt, so. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to cap, though, but I want to see, we want to see what makes you human. 
Like yeah, I want to. You want me to be sad? No, I don't want you to be <laughs> sad. No, I don't. You could, I'm very happy, but I happy, but I can acknowledge like it's been some that, shit that oh went my. on. Yeah, it's definitely been some shit that went on in my life. But any hurt that I've been through in my life always made me go harder. Like it really, God brought me more. Like you know. Mm. What was your biggest lesson then? Again, it don't have to be. Um, no, I know. Like my biggest lesson with just being hurt is. What was probably one of my biggest like letdowns or like my biggest? Don't set your expectations too high, mm. you know. Because then when they let your ass down, they let your ass down. How do you how do you set expectations? Stay level stay level headed with any situation. I feel like. So how do you set? What's the how do you differentiate setting expectations but having boundaries? Because I feel like this is something that you talk about having boundaries, right? Boundaries are cool. Boundaries are very cool, but when I say expectations, I mean like, mm, how can I explain this to make sense? Um, when I say expectations, I mean say it with a friendship. Mm -hmm. I expect X, Y, and Z out of you as a friend. Sometimes it might be like so high, like unrealistic for this person to like you what? as a friend. Like, okay, just for instance, this this could be like just hella dragging it, but. Say, okay, a birthday, I expect all my friends to get me X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you can't just expect all your friends to do that because then you're going to be let down. Like, because all your friends may not be able to, mm. you know? So don't just accept, set your expectations too high for anything. You know, like, even with going into a meeting, like, don't set your expectations too high because when you hear no, you might just, like, that shit might break you because you mm. just set your expectations way too high and you should just go in there level-headed and be prepared for whatever. Who is the judge? What's high and what's not? Right? Like, how, how do you how do you judge Your that? Personal preference, for real. Mm. As a person, you know, what do you look at as super high, and what do you look at as, you know, this is cool. Like this this a balance. Okay, like a worst case scenario type. Worst thing. case scenario. Okay. I always think worst case scenario. Sometimes that's not good because I mean, yeah, not saying I don't go into a situation thinking like the best, but I don't know. I ain't fun to just. No, I can get it. It's like, it's kind of like, look. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's like, if this happens, I'm okay with that. Yeah, but I'm okay not, with that. I'm right. right with that, too. Exactly. Yeah, I get that. Yo, do you feel like um, having all this success is sometimes could be like a negative in a way of like, because sometimes, I, I don't know where you are, but sometimes it's hard to enjoy our six, enjoy being in a moment because we're trying to chase another one. Do you ever feel like that? I always feel like that. And that's why I like, it take for my family to be like, you know, telling me like, dang, you doing this. Or like, I just went in a hair salon the other day and she was like, every time I see you, you doing something new. Like, you doing better than when I last seen you. And I'm just like, damn, like, I'm glad you think about it that way. But I look at it like I ain't doing good enough. Mm. Like, I'm very happy. And that's why sometimes you got to really sit back and just look from where you came from mm. to where you are now to really appreciate everything. Mm. But like my family just always be talking about it and like boasting all the time, and I just be like, y'all, like I haven't even made it to where I want to be. That's why these conversations are so important, and like mm -hmm. that's why I try to get people to be vulnerable because like I don't know, I never seen you speak in this light, right? It's always right. like with the girls and y'all be turning up, right? right? I mean, it's, it's yeah. what it is. But hearing you speak about God is like, yo, she's more than materialistic, right? She's more Definitely. than she's more than the designer she wear. I'm not even <clears throat> like I like material but i wouldn't call myself materialistic mm. like i don't obsess over this shit because one like once before i didn't really have this mm. and i was as happy as i am mm, like mm, mm. i'm still putting that shit on with what i got you know so i wouldn't really just call myself materialistic talk talk about the importance of being happy in but the absence of the, all the materialistic stuff before i had jewelry before i had all of this designer before I had everything that like the house I live in before I had all of that I was I always say I was like happiest in my little one bedroom apartment like mm -hmm. with everything I had I was so grateful because it was mine like I worked hard for it and you know it was mine so even so just have some fun right we'll have a little bit of fun so even in because y'all talked about this on poor mind shout out to them so even I if somebody, so even if somebody wearing some, uh, some, some knockoff shit, they should be happy in, in, in that knockoff. Knockoff, I don't condone in knockoff. <laughs> no, I don't condone in knockoff. But like, I feel like you know, don't be scared to just go wear no Nikes or no Adidas. Like you know, don't be scared to dress in your budget. I feel like, and that's I what... don't mean that offensively. I'm just saying like, why go buy? I don't. 
be liking it. I thought that was a thing now. Like, I hear people it, talk it about that on the internet. Thing. And shit. Like, like, I've been seeing it all stuff. over TikTok. They be just like buying like knockoff designers and stuff. And I mean, different shows with different folks, but I'm not doing it. Facts. I, know? I can't. I do ain't it. doing it. I can't do it. Yeah. Like, niggas see it's it. Niggas just niggas not. <laughs> I feel like it's it's, it's going to bring more harm than uh, right. happiness. Like, but, <laughs> fuck that. I mean, people want to do it. You know? Yo, so, I mean, what's what's up now, man? We got the uh, the show on BET. Mm -hmm. The project is out. Um, it's all you, by the way, right? Yes. No features? No features on my project. Now, why not flex? Like, why not? Come on. Got to, you know? Something? It's just me, you know? Um, I really, with this project, I just wanted to show people how I was coming, like, the elevation in my music. Because my last project, it, was, it wasn't mediocre, but you can hear this project and just hear the growth, mm. you know? In my delivery, in the lyrics, and just everything, the whole production behind mm -hmm. every song, like, you can hear the growth. So that's why I tell people, like, when they go listen to it, like, really listen to it. Like, the melodic records on there. Like, I tapped into, like, some other parts of my artistry. Now, you got into, you get you gave a good balance of, like, what the girl's talking about now. now I ain't give too much, you know. Yeah, too, yeah, I yeah mean, like, you gave a good balance of, like, popping your shit, talking uh -huh. about you want trips and shit like that. And, right, you know what I'm saying? Right. All that shit that girl be talking about. Mm -hmm. I fucking hate that shit. Like, oh, put so much pressure on me. Like, y'all got to give us a fucking break. No. Can't fuck with me if you take me on a trip, unless you take me on a trip, shit like that. But you had to give a great, great balance of that. All jokes. Or not, I'm just saying. <laughs> you can't. That got to be like the standard now, though. Like, you can't vote with me if you don't take me on the trip. You got to just make, make me happy. Like, it's standards for sure. What does like, it take to make you happy? What does it take to make you happy, honestly? Pay attention to me, you know. Take time out to really, like, learn me and who I am. Um. Yeah, just pay attention. That's it, honestly. You pay attention to me, you're going to see what I like and what I don't like, and you're going to do everything to make me happy. I feel like you're around too many people to just... Because you can have a regular motherfucker on the street that's going to pay attention to you and make you happy. You're going to overlook them. No, because you got to spend money, too. Right. Yeah. So regular, got... motherfucker, regular motherfucker on the street, <laughs> you can't spend no money. Like, no. You got to be a rich nigga. I mean, you know, look, look at what I'm doing for myself. If you can't do for me what I'm doing for myself, then I just don't need you around me. If you can't teach me nothing that I don't already know, Buy me something that I ain't got and just pay attention to me. Hey, that's Dior got some motherfucking sense. I, I, I say that because so many girls would be like, nah, I got to date a rich nigga, but they don't, they don't even know how to, they only can't even explain why. But yeah. It's like, yo, I already bought this shit for myself, so if you at least can't take, keep up yeah. with my lifestyle, like, you ain't in my league, and that's okay. Yeah. Respect. I, it got some sense. Buddy. I feel like every girl deserves a man that's going to spoil them. Like, every girl. Every girl. Every woman. But you got to. So every, every girl, girl, come on, bro. Um, come every on. girl deserves to be treated nice. Yeah, but like, if you can't spoil yourself, why should I spoil you? Let's be real. Come what on. if she can't like necessarily just spoil herself and just you know go crazy on herself? But she treat herself to nice things. She keep her hair up. She keep her nails up. Like she take care of herself. Okay, cool. I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. What if said guy can't spoil you, but he can keep your nails done, keep your hair done? I don't need that. Exactly. Do myself. Exactly. So the, the answer to your question is, if so, a girl can't do all that for herself, she can't expect expectations. She can't expect me to come and do it for her either. Okay, right. Like, I guess you're right. But, I guess, you know, <laughs> I guess. But speaking from terms of me, nah, like. Yeah. You're different, though. Yeah. Like, like you're different. It's, it's like. <laughs> It's, it's yeah. all you feel me, right? But nah, I, uh, but yeah, like I was saying, the project is definitely well versed. Mm -hmm. You being the only, like, you having no future features that was intentional. It just happened like that. My favorite songs just ain't had no features, and I'm like, they ain't need them. But you could have you know? flexed and made some calls. And you definitely could have made some calls, but I just decided not to. And you independent? And I'm independent. How is that, bro? And I'm independent. Do you like it for real, for real? Or you just... It's definitely beauty in being independent. I get to do what the fuck I want when I want. Mm. Like, that's the best. That, that's the best situation you could be in. Doing what you want when you want. Having freedom. Having the creativity over everything you got going on. Being able to say no and yes whenever you want to. Mm. You know? And it just made me feel like more of a boss because a lot of people can't say they're doing this shit by themselves. Nah, facts. You know? So you're not looking to be signed with nobody else or nothing like I that? I mean, eventually, but when the right opportunity presents itself, I ain't in no rush. Who would it be with, though? Um, It got to make sense. like It got to make sense, but I honestly don't have a favorite like label. For real? Is that crazy? Kind of. I mean, kind of. Like, I mean, like, I see artists on, artists on RCA that I like. I mean... 
It's not bad. You know, I would. You know, I it's would a lot of different good labels, though. You know who I'm thinking of. I'm ignorant. I mean, it's, what are you thinking of? I mean, there's only one like lit label that's killing shit right now. Who? I mean, uh, I mean QC. Oh, QC lit. Yeah, like I just feel yeah. like you were you were probably like I said, if the right way. opportunity presents, tell them drop the bag. <laughs> tell them drop the bag. I'm going for sure, but if not, I'm well, gonna pass. Man, I fuck with you for pulling up. Thank you so much. Thank um, you for having me. Is there anything that we didn't touch on? We touched on my music. We touched on my past life. You got me a little sad. Um, you capping. You full of shit. You got in my business a little, a little bit. A little not bit. Real. I think it was cool. Um, We dug into the past. I think it was very respectful. This still. was a very good interview. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I enjoyed you. this. Yo, I, I, I just, again, I said it before, but I, I appreciate ha- sitting down with a lady like yourself being mm-hmm. so young. But being so popular and famous and lit in mm-hmm. your in your in your in your own way, but still so grounded. Yeah, thank you. I, I think a lot of people aren't. Don't let the shit get to your head. Like you gotta stay level headed, you know. A lot of this guy gave you gave you this shit. He can take it all away. A lot of women ain't like that nowadays. Yeah, I take pride in being, you know, grounded and balanced. You know, yeah. And humble. Please. I don't like to say humble because a lot of people they take humble as like. You don't really know who you are. I know who I am. Like, I know what I got. Like, ain't nothing wrong with being human. humble. Ain't nothing wrong with being humble, but the definition behind humble. Let's look it up. What does it say? I'm a definition type okay, of guy. I, I, I don't know. Hope I ain't taking too much of your time. Humble. What's oh. the definition of being humble? Oh. Having or showing modest or low self esteem. Low, low self No, not low self esteem. I misread it. It okay. says having what? or showing. A modest or low esteem of one's own importance. I think that's low. That's like low, low self esteem. Not really low. Low esteem of one's importance. I know, like I know who I am. I know I'm important. Like I know my worth. But you don't think you're bigger than nobody, though. That I ain't gotta low. walk around thinking I'm bigger than nobody. The only person I'm trying to be bigger than is the person I was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> okay, you better drop them off. No, for jokes. real though. That's how I feel. So. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I don't really like saying humble. I get it, but I don't have a problem with being humble because if, I think Jay-Z said it, he was like, I apologize if my my way of life made you feel away, right? Right. If, if, if my lifestyle made you feel away, am I bad? I'm going to use that. Yeah. I apologize because a lot of people look at me and be like, oh, you trying to like brag or Bro, trying to I'm do just this me. and that. I'm just me. But when, when I look at it like, since, since we already there, right? We talked mm-hmm. about it. Okay. When you walk in purpose uh-huh. and you walk with the, like, the favor of God, mm-hmm. but I don't... It, I, it shouldn't be nothing that you can do or wear that make me feel away because exactly. I know who I am, right? Like, it's nothing that nobody can do. So we're going to say that. I could be in a room with whoever. I could be in a room with the best interviewers or whatever, but yeah. I'm, I am know my time is coming and I know I got a bigger purpose than all exactly. of so like, But that's why, that's why I think I could use humble because, like, I'm humble. But I ain't – I know I'm that nigga, though. Don't get it fucked up. Like, you that – We shit. saying the same thing, but humble, the definition behind it is She just, like, fuck that. Yeah. Okay, we can't. But I, I'm, I'm gonna just call it balance. I'm balanced. <laughs> but well, yeah, I, I, I fuck with you being being so balanced and well yeah. well rounded, man. Um, it it really brings a joy to these conversations because yeah, whew, it can't ain't too many like me. Okay, probably should. <laughs> Yo, uh, Des Dior, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast.